That's I would I read this. Would That's you? A few, one of the very few books I think I'd read. That sounds quite interesting. Would you read it? No, I've got better oh. things to be doing, but <laughs> don't get that in. <laughs> Do you think it looks like a vampire? Do you think it looks like something else on the cover? I think it looks like a dickhead. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are well. Now, we're very lucky today. <laughs> Because Tom has agreed to join us again. I bet no one thought he would be back, but you are. Yeah. You just couldn't wait to be back, did no, you? No, I couldn't. No, I couldn't wait. <laughs> um, okay. No, I need to be more enthusiastic about this. You do need to be more enthusiastic about this. I'm very enthusiastic. <laughs> you can't film that, you just spat everywhere. <laughs> you can't keep that in. Laugh out loud. So today, what we're going to be doing is going through my April and Owls TBR. I'm going to be showing Tom the book, the cover, the title, and he's going to guess what the kind of the what's that I'm looking for? Premise. The premise. The story is. Plot. The plot. Theme. Theme. Thank you. Time. Time frame. It goes in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. Like think, trying to guess goes. whether it's. Can, like in our world, whether fantasy. it's fantasy. I've been pretty excited about the owls thing. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, to you. I was gonna ask you, what yeah. can you tell them that you know about owls? The owls. Uh, well, I never really watched Harry Potter until I kind of met Megan, and we went to Florida yeah. last year, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we went to all like the Harry Potter rides, and they're pretty sick, actually. Yeah, they were your favourite. So that I, I quite, I can, I can quite get into the owl thing. I think that's quite cool. Yeah. And you're doing. Uh, journalist, librarian. No, no I was going to be librarian, but I couldn't fit loads of the prompts. So now I'm going for Hogwarts Professor. Hogwarts Professor. But I haven't got to read seven books. Seven books for that. Which is tough. I'm aiming to read 20 books this month, which is the most I've ever read in a month. I don't know how, how well it's going to go. <laughs> we'll do my owls books first, and then we'll do them in order of my vlogs. Because I, I post a reading vlog every Sunday that are themed. Yep. And so I'm not going to tell them, I'm not going to tell you what the themes are for the vlogs. I'm just going to show you the books. First book, first book. Are you ready? So I'm this ready. is for um, Ancient Runes. And that is to read a book with heart on the cover or in the title. Heart on the cover. Well, you didn't read heart, heart Stopper then. I don't have any more Heart Stopper to read. I've read it all. Well, yeah, I was going to say. Okay. Going on about that, so yeah. for this, I've gone with Heartless by Marissa Meyer. Now, can you guess? This is a bit of a difficult one. Can you guess what this book is about? Lunar Chronicles. Yeah. So it's part of the thing. No. It's got. Oh no, wait, wait, wait. It's the Lunar Chronicles, my bro. Author of the Lunar Chronicles. Oh, I see. There's uh, roses, there's thorns, there's a crown, there's a sword. So. First thing, seeing those thorns, I was thinking some sort of Jesus type reference with like a crown of thorns <laughs> because there's a crown and there's thorns. Wait, there's logic. But then I'm thinking it's going to be some sort of pseudo romancy Game of Thrones typey thing where it's revolving around dynasties and, uh, and and royal families and there's stabbing in the back and that's where there's like thorns and, and roses and things. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. I think there's some themes in there. Some themes. Okay, I'm going to give you a clue. What if I were to tell you that the Lunar Chronicles, which is the series that this author, this is a standalone, but Lunar Chronicles is the series that she's most well known for, I'd say, is fairy tale retellings. Right. And this so is, this is, a fairy tale this is in a similar vein. Think of some, okay. something to do with hearts. Okay, so when I think of hearts, I think of Alice in Wonderland with like, like uh, the Queen of Hearts, isn't it? It's a Queen of Hearts retelling. I was pretty. I was you were pretty, pretty close. Yeah, you pretty were pretty close with what you got. Is she that has, her name? Yeah. Is that a fake name? It's pretty I don't name. actually know. I know with the Lunar Chronicles, they used to design it very much like the oh, Twilight. Oh yeah, books Twilight. That's a rip off. Because they want you, you know, to. I remember being in bookshops and seeing so many things that looked like that. It yeah, all everyone. So try, everyone tries to it buy off the Twilight. Same thing. I've always thought the the shades of grey colours. Especially look because like of her name, it's Stephanie Meyer Twilight, and so they're going to be next to each other on the shelves. She's fallen down a peg or two in my estimation. She's a copycat. I think it was probably the publishing house's decision, not hers. Sell out. So I think you did pretty well there. I would say yeah, that's I'm a success. Yeah, I'm saying that's a 1-0, that's, that's a 1-0 to me. That's a success for Tom. I actually don't really know what this book is about. Well, I kind of do. Well, so the next one is Astronomy. Astronomy? And it's that. night classes. Read the majority of this book when it's dark outside. And so this, I've chosen The Graveyard Book, Volume 1 by Neil Gaiman. 
Oh, hang on. So this is, is this in, in any way, shape or form motivated by the, uh, inspired by the owls? Or do you just have to read any book at night? So you just chose that book? Yeah, I just chose this book because it's a graphic... Why did you choose this book? Because it's a graphic novel and so I wanted something short. Okay. That I yeah, could so add easier in. at night. Yeah, yeah, easy to read at night. And I think it's kind of spooky. Well, it looks very Dracula-esque. I don't actually true. know what it's about, so I don't. It's a vampire in it in the front cover. Hang on, how are we even playing this game if she doesn't know what's going on? <laughs> I know what all the know. other books are about, but Dad bought me this. Essentially, what it looks like on the front cover is Dracula's holding Luke Skywalker. <laughs> well, so I'll take a, I'll take a, I'll take a. I'm going to give this. you a win because I actually don't know what it's about. Okay. Well, I just is, picked it because. Is, that was pretty bad. <laughs> Go get the next book. For my care of magical creatures exam. It says hippogriffs, creature with a beak on the cover. Wow. Okay. I've chosen The Raven Boys by Maggie Seawater. The Raven Boys. Ta-da. Beak. Okay, okay. Right. I'm pausing you here. Yeah. For my GCC drama. Yeah. We, this is, this is weird. I've never heard of this from my life. Uh, GCC is like, I don't know what the American equivalent is. It's like, like the owls. Yeah. It's like our examinations. Well, I did drama as well. I was pretty bad at it, but you were good at we, it. I was in a group with like loads of my mates and stuff and we devised a, a story about the Raven boys. It was called Raven boys. I, f I fuck you not. If I remember rightly, I was. You the Raven boys. I, we genuinely, this is our own creation. We created a story called the Raven boys. Basically I was the main character who was like some, some dorky little servant in the hotel and there's this nasty hotel owner who was like also secretly a mage and like turned me into a wizard uh, uh, turned me into a raven and like i was f I, I, that is all i can remember of it, but it was very funny what do you think it's about well i mean i just gave you a pretty big uh is that what you think it's about thing. well I, I don't know do you think um, it's fantasy do you think it's well, contemporary obviously it's got a raven on the front isn't it it's not gonna be like oh if you kiss your true love he will die okay oh, well, well there you go then yeah. Someone that kisses a true love and becomes a raven and dies and she has to probably try and get him back to life by fanning about with some ravens. What it's about, it's about a girl named Blue and she is told that the first boy you love, if you kiss him, he will die. But she becomes friends with the raven boys, who's like a group of teenage boys that she knows. And it's due with ley lines. Do you know what ley lines is? Every time everyone says ley lines about this book, I don't really know what it is. Oh, it's, it's, a fan it's like a fancy book. and. I wanted to read it because Kayla loves it. It's one of Kayla's okay. books and love. It's, yeah, yeah, it's one of her. It's one of her. The goat. The goat. <laughs> the goat. <laughs> I'm, okay, like compared to what Heartless, that's a pretty. That's a cheap. If I saw that, and I, I'm not a big book person, but I saw that, that's pretty cheap to me. I Is don't it? like that front cover. I can't believe they've put me in this hovel. Oh, there's bird poo on the window. This must be a minus 10 star hotel. This is the worst hotel I've ever seen. It's a YMCA. This is like a dog kennel. Oh my God. I'm not gonna make Tom guess two of the books I'm reading for Magical Reason Plots, because again, I don't really know what the plot is. For Defense Against the Dark Arts, Grindelow's book set at the Sea or Coast. I'm gonna be reading Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue. Uh, I don't really know what it is. I was talking to Keris about, uh, like, <laughs> trying to help me figure out what I was doing for my prompts, and she said that a good chunk of that is set on the sea, and that she recommended it, so I'm gonna be listening to the audiobook. And then for Muggle Studies, a book from the perspective of a muggle, or like basic or contemporary, I'm gonna be reading Piecing Me Together by, I think it's by Renee Watson. And that's just like a really short contemporary audiobook that I've been wanting to read for ages. And I think it's about a young black girl like growing up in like a disadvantaged community. For divination, I have to assign numbers to my TBR and use a random number generator to pick my read. And I forgot to film it, but just trust me, just trust me. I'm going to be reading Lair of Dreams by Libba Bray. It's quite a big one, actually, so I'm kind of scared to have to read this Okay, as well. well, I can tell you're scared to read that because a little a little peek behind, uh, peek behind the film glass or whatever you'd call it for the audience. We have to take these books backwards and forwards from Essex to Leeds, which is like 400 miles. I've seen this book come with us up and down quite a lot, and I've always wondered what this book is because I've seen books... Is it part... Part is there a series. purple one? Yeah, purple yeah, one's the see, first I've one. I've seen this one before, and I've always thought they look good. They look. You like the cover covers. for the purple one? Yeah. I like the cover for this one as well because they stood out 
against other stuff because it was like I bought them in Florida yeah, actually Netflix. because I wanted these covers yeah, so bad these good. are the American ones and I yeah, still haven't read it Diviners you speak a lot about the Diviners Diviners don't you? yeah um, I do yeah, no. Before the oh. Devil have you read have you no read... that's the third one in the series okay it's so you're reading this one so why did it take you so long to get from the Diviners to this one I haven't been able to fit it into a video like a vlog so that's why I see Layer of Dreams I have utterly no idea and it's difficult when it's not when it's a series book compared to standalone because this is the mm. second second in a long line. Yeah. I don't know what happened in the first one. This is like no. midway through a plot because if well, it's one book, it's or the first one, it's got more obvious plot line. You know, yeah. it's easy to guess. Can you guess the era of the books? Okay, right. This is my guess. I think it's going to be like fifties. Yeah, that's my guess. But they're going back to this old Victorian house. Uh, I don't know, it's a, and it's a layer of dreams. This Victorian house, because in the cover, mm. there's a house. Uh, you ready? Me yeah, to tell I'm you? rubbish. Okay, so me. this is actually set in the 1920s. Okay, well that was what I was. That's kind of this. That was a time frame I was thinking. Sure, Jan. You said 1950s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm thinking like America, 1920s, 50s, and it, I was thinking like 50s, the end of the period. You know, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Set in New York in 1920s. Uh, I wasn't thinking that. And it is about a group of friends uh, kind of fighting against evil forces. Our lead character Evie, if she that's touches not what I was if she touches an object that someone like has owned, she can she can find this. out like about their life or see parts of their life or maybe see what yeah. happened when that object was last used or something like that. Well, I'm glad you're reading this one. I'm really excited to actually get to it. I've been wanting to read it for so long. But I don't know if it's the best book to be reading when I read to read 20 books this month. It is big. It's a big boy. So this is my last book for Owls. And this is for... I told you the wrong thing. I told you the wrong thing. I told you the wrong thing. The Raven Boys is not for Beak on the cover. It's for Charms, something with white on the cover. And then this is for a book with a beak on the cover. Sorry. There's much less beak on this one than on But there is one. a beak! So this is Ruin and Rising by Lee Bardugo. Ah, uh, the goat. The goat. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> what do you think this is about? Well, Lee Bardugo. Mm -hmm. The other one I know that she wrote was about pirates, yeah? Or a boat. You're thinking of the Starlet Sea, I think. Lee Bardugo wrote the one that is also blue on the cover, no? I don't know which one's... It's got a scarab beetle on the front. You're thinking one with the snake on the cover. Yeah, maybe. Ninth House. Yeah. Okay, so I was thinking this one's about pirates, but I'm obviously Run and Rising. It's got a phoenix on the front. That's a joke that's fiery. Uh, the font looks very Tolkien esque. Grish. Grishnaverse. Grishaverse. Grishaverse. What does that mean? It's the world, the universe. Oh, her own, like, universe. And, yeah. like, okay, yeah. it's like Terry Pratchett, yeah. Discworld type stuff. Someone trying to rebuild a kingdom similar to like rebuilding Rome or something. It is about people having to kind of re... I don't want to... This is the last in the series, so I don't want to spoil what happens at the end of the second book. But it is about... It is going to be about people having oh, to... Oh, it's in a series. Yeah, this is the last in the series. Well, there you go then. That's tough. It is tough. But it is about people having to kind of rebuild a movement, a group, in some ways a kingdom. So you are partly right there. And we have Alina. She's basically a human torch. She can just what, like the Fantastic Four kind of person. She can just emit light. Like she uh, can just like push light out of her body. That's a pretty useless skill, isn't it? Yeah, it's fucking useless. <laughs> that's so shit. <laughs> that's so shit. Because it's shit. It's basically her trying to end the battle she is currently in. What using her light powers? Isn't yeah. Like and blind some fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> like that's just pointless. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't bother reading this one. Well, the reason uh, I want to read it is so I can read Six of Crows. And this and Six of Crows in Crooked Kingdom is a duology and they're in the same universe as this. This is the original tr trilogy, but a lot of people don't like this trilogy as much because oh, I can see bit... why. So I just need to read this so I can read. And she wrote this sort of trilogy before and all the other writers. Yeah. Stuff. Nine thousand so Newest book. Her way, she just yeah. figured her way out. Yeah, that's fair then. Yeah. And now we're done with my owls TBR. We're going to get into my regular books that I need to read for vlogs. And I've got to guess these as well. Yeah, you got to guess these as well. Well, there's three there I'm not going to make you guess. Should we just do, hold them up quickly? Because they're non-fiction. I was going to be, I was going to do so well on these ones. 
There's no point you guessing them because they're non-fiction. So uh, I'm going to be reading Feminists Don't Wear Pink and Other Lies. I could have guessed that. Could you? Yeah. Bad Feminists by Roxane Gay. Could have guessed that. And Invisible Women Definitely by uh, that. Car- that How do I say her see. name? What? You went to see Invisible Women, didn't you? No, I don't. No, I didn't. What was the film you went to see with Elisa? Little Women. Little Women, okay. It's- and actually, me, um, Keris and... Brit from Basically Brit are going to be yeah. hosting a live show reading this. Really? I'll put the... Yeah. That's quite cool. So we're hosting a read-along. Actually, quite a lot of people have bought this already um, and have told us they're going to join in, which is really exciting because obviously with a non-fiction book, you worry that no one's going to join in. I've, I'll put the date up on the screen. I think it is right at the end of April. I think it's April 26th. I could be wrong though. And so you should have quite a lot of time if you want to join in to pick this up. Um, I'm really excited to read it. It's basically about, like it says on the front, exposing data bias in a world designed for men. So next book is Watch Us Rise by Renee Watson, Ellen Hagen. Watch Us Rise. Okay. This was right. got for me by Keris. I've yes, mentioned Keris remember, like 5,000 times. This, actually. Yeah, shout out. The goat. Shout out to the goat. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Two feminist pals, mm? part of a feminist movement, mm-hmm. and they're just, they're just, they're just conquering the world. You're basically right. Yeah, well, there are many people out there who will tell you, you can't. What you've got to do is turn around and say, just watch me. It's pretty, so pretty it's obvious. Pretty, it's a pretty it's obvious about. cover. So it's about two girls who are... Cre- Jasmine and Chelsea. Jasmine and Chelsea, who create a kind of activist feminist group at their at their secondary school, their high school. That's quite a cool premise. Yeah, and so I'm reading this in this week's vlog. The next book I'm going to be reading, is actually, I'm going to start this today, is The Bitter, it says The Bitter Kingdom, I think it's just Bitter Kingdom now, by Ray Carson. I'll put the picture up on the screen, but that's so you can look at it. Right. Do you know what series? Do you know what I've been doing with this series, which you have been, you have been hearing me talk about a lot? Set in the Middle East or like the Indian subcontinent because of the dress of the woman on the cover. She looks very regal. Mm-hmm. What am I doing for this series? I'm doing something. With Nicole? Uh, oh yeah, hang on. Wait. Yeah. Yeah, you stay there. Let me think. I have actually watched these. These. He uh, watches the live. Sh- oh! The live. What? I don't want to give the clip, but you know it's the live yeah, shows. Yeah, I know it's the live shows. Okay. Did Nicole, yeah, yeah, he watches the live shows. She falls in love with a geezer who's wham. <laughs> and he's got a moustache. <laughs> Yeah, but she wasn't meant to fall in love with him. She was meant to fall in love with an Italian-sounding geezer, but she ends up falling in love with her... her... Okay, I get the plot line. So she's, like, being escorted somewhere, and she goes on a boat or something, and she goes on a train, some point, yeah. and uh, there's a geezer who's looking after her. So I, I, I guess she's a princess. You're talking about the she's second book, but yeah. And he's, Don't he's spoil a, and he's... the second... Well, okay. You, you talked about it on the live stream, and he's hench. He is hench. And, uh, in this we follow Elisa, who is kind of like the chosen one. She has a godstone in her belly button, oh, yeah, that's so which daft. gives her like... It's actually quite cool. Like, it's not actually daft. It's not like um, our human torch. That it's not daft. like that. It's not daft. Well, you did well with that one, because you've heard well. me talk about it a lot. Yeah. And Tom... I've heard everyone talk so about it. So, I think the live... What date is Thursday? The 2nd. So, the live show is going to be on my channel on the 4th, and... I mean, it won't be non-spoilery, but if you wanted to watch it, you can. It's Tom, Tom will be there watching I'll watch, it. Yeah, I watched playing FIFA. Yeah. <laughs> you, you like seeing all the comments as well, don't you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it will be on. Is that the Saturday? The yeah, the Saturday. It will be on the Saturday on my channel. The first, the last one. So I'm very excited. And next, we've got Bunny by Mona Awad. I have heard about this book. Okay. I know that it's really quite disturbing. Oh. I know that it's written in quite a way that's uh, hard to follow. Hmm. And I know that it has fuck all to do with bunny rabbits. Do you know why it's called Bunny? Uh, no. But what I do, what I think I remember about it is, uh, I think it's setting a cabin. No. no? Okay, maybe, okay, so Megan bought this book at the same time as buying another book, if I remember rightly, and it was yellow. And that one was yes, in the cabin. Yes, the hunting party. So I must have mixed them yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anything and I else? do know that this is weird. It I is really it's weird. disturbing. Yeah. Too much drama for me. <sighs> Could it be to do with somebody, being a woman being a bit crazy and killing rabbits? Because there's bunny boilers as a phrase as well. Oh. Well, you're right on some aspects. So it is a very, from what I know, disturbing 
weird book. Uh, it's about a girl who's at university and at her university is a clique of girls who all just call them each other bunny. So they go, hi bunny, oh, hi bunny. Weird. So, yeah. That's like, uh, for those who know, that's like the ones who called themselves uh, in drag race. They go, Heather. oh, we're the Heathers. Uh, <laughs> we're the Heathers. <laughs> I mean, what's that song goes? Uh, like, uh, fuck with Heather. Uh, who the fuck is Heather? Who the fuck is Heather? That was because there was a film called Heathers. So they were yeah, saying well, where the Heathers. tragic. But it's basically a horror book. And I think yeah, there's... Yeah, that's what I remember I being think there is, Yeah, I think there's some killing of animals. I think right. there's some, like... Dark shit, basically. So maybe this whole like friendship group becomes a bit culty. Yeah, that's. I would I read this. Would that's you? A few, one of the very few books I think I'd read. That sounds quite interesting. Would you read it? No, I've got better oh. things to be doing, but <laughs> don't keep that in. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do enough reading as is. I'd like this front cover. Dig. I've always found this by really A.S. King. Really good front cover. What do you think this is about? Well, I've always seen this on the shelf and thought. Great cover. That's a good cover yeah. because it's ambiguous. I like the kind of off, the kind of grey colour. Mm, but like, I always color. wondered, is this vegetables or is it, because I've this first time I've seen it up close. But I thought, is it vegetables or is it like something to do inside the body? Because it looks a bit like cell-like. Mm, yeah. But from here, it looks like potato-esque. Uh -huh. But at the same time, it looks genome-y. I'm you've... pretty stumped. I, my guess is either potatoes or tumours. It's about a family of potato farmers. I'm a fucking legend. So this is about a group of potato farmers. Again, like Bunny, it's a book a lot of people say you don't want to know too much. Well, going off, into it. that sounds fucking boring. But again, very strange book. A.S. King is known for writing quite weird, quite out there YA books. Some people in this book don't. Some of the characters don't have names. Like, they'll be called The Freak, you, The Woman. You were telling me about the, this, because you bought this at the same time as you bought Bunny as well, didn't you? No, I think I got this for my birthday. You would have heard me talk about it in that one. You did, and it sounded interesting. Yeah. That did so, sound interesting, again, like the whole non-name thing. Yeah, another weird book. A lot of people say it's one of her weirder ones. Now, this is the one I've been looking forward to the most, I think, front you? covers. I've always just wondered what's this going on This is a great there. front cover. This is one of my favourite front covers. I like the colour choices. It's a good colours. Yeah. Okay, are we ready? I'm ready. Wilder Girls by Rory Power. Did you get this for your birthday as well? No, I bought this at the same time as Bunny. Yeah. See, so I reckon I put the, put them all together because yeah. I'm seeing, seeing that. It is a good front cover. It's it a is. really good front cover. Great front cover. Stand up straight, otherwise I look really tall next to you. Thanks. So it's flowers. Flowers. There's a girl. There's a girl. Rory Power. You will change. You might survive. I know it. Do you? Another book. It's about girls that start turning into plants. They grow like limbs and shit. Yay! Well done! Oh! He fills my heart with warmth. I like the sound of this book. Yeah. Because I play a lot of video games and uh, it sounds like The Last of Us. Mm -hmm. So it's about a gir girls at like this boarding school and a plague comes and infests the school and it all kind of manifests in girls in different ways. Some of them are growing plants out of them, some of them are growing extra limbs, and then one of the girls goes missing, and so some of them venture out, because they've been told not to venture out of the school, and they venture out and they're trying to find I'm the girl. I'm not being funny, right, but if my power's gone missing and I've just grown a fucking potato out of my head, like, I'm not really that fucked, to be honest. I mean, like, someone going missing, that seems like... <laughs> About each other, it's a scary Yeah, they time. care about each other. I think they know, might have been left to fend for themselves. Sarah's turned into a turnip, or... you know what I mean? <laughs> I don't want to explain to everyone why I'm reading these yet, but let's just say I've read all of these before. Hush Hush by Becca Fitzpatrick. It's probably going to be some sort of Twilight knockoff, sort of pseudo erotic, uh, vampire y, werewolf y. Do you think it looks like a vampire or do you think it looks like something else on the cover? I think it looks like a dickhead. He's like... He's, What's he got on him? He's got wings, but like that's not like a common so thing. So what... If it's not going to be vampires, she thought, I can't rip it off with vampires. What is she going to go with that's kind of like... I've never heard of anything in fantasy where people are sprouting wings. Oh, come on. What, is it an angel? Fallen angel. Yeah, but when you picture angels, you don't picture crow wings. Okay, so he's meant to be... You know, he's Lucifer, isn't he? He's, you know... I mean... That looks shit. <laughs> that looks really shit. 
You liked this book when you were growing up. I remember you saying like you're obsessed with this. Yeah, I was. I read all of them, all of the series. This is a four part series. Four. Four. This listen, it gets worse. Just wait. This is well known for being a bit shit. I think now. I think a lot of people read this back in the day, and it's really a lot of people read that. Yeah, more Did so it come than up the next... before Twilight. No, I think it came out after. In the kind of because, oh, well, like just after. just like when the Hunger Games was really popular, there was a sudden wave of loads yeah. of dystopian. Oh, what was that maze book? The Maze Runner, Divergent. You know. Oh yeah, I've never seen all so that. So just sort of like shit. that, when Twilight came out, there was a whole wave of that kind of fiction. You should be embarrassed with yourself. <laughs> I remember everyone reading. Uh, maids around and stuff in like yeah English I class. never really read that I was never into dystopian You're too busy reading about this. I was too busy reading about this <laughs> so next we've got Evermore by um Alison <laughs> Noel she looks it's my like gown. to put her up she looks like the ultimate Karen <laughs> I was gonna she's say she's permanently that. seeing the manager and it's a Twilight rip off yeah another Twilight rip off I mean they all have the same colours yeah <laughs> they all look so similar I remember being like a kid and like going to like Waterstones and stuff and like <laughs> And like seeing on the shelves, just uh, every book looked the same. Looked the same. They, they looked just had dark like colours with like a, a reddish pop, fruit yeah, yeah. in the middle, yeah. or like something a bright colour. And I just couldn't. I just thought, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I was generally baffled because I didn't know at the time like what Twilight was and stuff. I was too busy reading Beast Quest. <laughs> okay, well, there's clearly some sort of love interest or some sort of. Uh, do I even need to have a guess this? I mean, it pretty much writes itself, innit? This is a six part series Fuck. and I read them all. <laughs> Some girl, she's a teenager, yeah. she's got a bit of a love interest, she's got a bit Those of a darker brooding side. Well, actually, this one's a bit different oh. than what you may think. It's about a girl me. named Eva. Eva Moore. Her name is Eva. And she's in a car crash which kills all her family yeah. and almost kills her. Could but when she that. survives, she can see people's auras. <laughs> Fuck me. So I'm going to be reading this this month. You're going to read that again? Okay, well, you were like, oh, I don't want to tell everyone why I'm reading this. They can pretty much guess why this is, this is, this is the comeback. This is part two. Part two, part it is two. part two. Quite if they know. Here. The last book I'm going to be reading this month is Beautiful Dead, book one, Jonas by Eden Maguire. I remember you saying you really like this book. Uh-huh. Uh, so for me, I like anime and it looks like typical sort of anime school girl yeah, sort of horror kind of shooter vibe. type stuff she can fall in love with dead people she can see dead ghosts she falls in love with a ghost or like a zombie or something like that correct that's right yeah I'm so like, all of at one high school in one year four kids die four four teenagers die right and then the, there's four books in this series <laughs> And uh, the first one, Jonas, was her boyfriend and he died in a motorcycle accident. And oh, basically, she starts getting visions of all of of the people that died and like speaking to them and stuff. This was in my, my library at school, like my school library. And we used to have, do you ever get time, in year seven, we'd get timetabled one hour each week to go to the library and read. Like we had Oh to yeah, we, know, we used to get the books and take them back. Oh yeah, we had to go sit in there. So like I can lesson. pretty much tell you what everyone was reading in that class. <laughs> Most people were reading Hunger Games. I was reading Skullduggery Pleasant. <laughs> but I got everyone to read this series. Like I got everyone on it. So there we have it. That is all the books I'm going to be all trying done. to read this month. Do you think I'm going to manage to read all the books? Uh, I think this is going to be a struggle. Yeah, let's go now. Okay. Let's go play some Animal Crossing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you're reading this month. If you're taking part in the owls, let me know uh, what career you're going for mm. and what books you're reading, because I'd like to know. Any else if you're becoming Hogwarts professors, because we can walk around the halls of Hogwarts together. <laughs> I'm actually quite looking forward to the owls. I've been looking forward to that. I thought it's really cool. It's such premise. a cool re premise. Um, premise. So, and yeah. Actually, oh. I just want to say as okay. well, Whoever designed them little things, like you know, you got the Google Doc with yeah. all, like, the pages. Did it, yeah. Whoever did that, that's pretty cool. That's that's it's a lot cool. of effort. It is. She puts a lot so of remember effort you putting in your efforts. Your your read read along uh, yeah. readathon twenty four book of PJ Deathon. Yeah. And uh, I remember you getting stressed out about that. So I can't imagine how doing that one. Yeah. That's pretty good. Shout yeah. out to you. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you very very soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>